takeaway number five, and this again is important, of the demolition of the Babri Masjid, News TV entered our homes and lives. Madhya Pradesh, my friends, is more difficult to call. The views expressed in this blog are hosted on my own website, are strictly personal and do not reflect the views of any organization. Hello and welcome friends once again to Straight Back, my weekly video blog where as the title suggests, I comment with a straight bat. Now this week, I want to bring you my key takeaways on a big political question. Who is winning the battle for the states? I've just traveled in the last couple of weeks through Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh. So this week, my takeaways in straight bat will focus on who is winning these key states. But before I come to that question, a caveat. Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh, my friends, are among the country's biggest states in terms of size, much larger, larger than most mid-sized European nations. In tightly contested elections, it isn't easy to make predictions for such large states with sharp sub-regional disparities. I in fact recall traveling through Madhya Pradesh in 1993. This was an election being held against the backdrop of the demolition of the Babri Masjid and there was a visible Ram Lalla wave. Everywhere I went, there seemed to be an emotional connect every time I mentioned Ram Janmabhumi. Remember, this was the print media age, long before 24 by 7 news TV entered our homes and lives. I was working for the Times of India and we didn't really have any breaking news pressures. As I crisscrossed Madhya Pradesh, then an even larger state, because remember it included what is now Chhattisgarh, I was convinced that the BJP had the edge because I could see the assertion of a strong Hindu identity. A piece I wrote for the Times of India at the end of my travels was headlined, Ram Wave puts BJP in pole position in Madhya Pradesh. I could not have been more wrong. When the election results were declared in 1993, it was the Congress that had won Madhya Pradesh. And I soon realized where I had gone wrong. Most of my travels had taken me to urban and semi-urban pockets where Ram was the talk talking point in all the markets and bazaars. But I had missed out on some of the large tribal dominated districts where clearly the Congress had the edge among its more traditional voters. It taught me a lesson. Always look for the silent voter beyond the bright lights of the city. So this time in Madhya Pradesh, I traveled around mostly by train. In fact, a picture of me resting on a railway station has gone viral. Truth is, train and car journeys are the only way to sense the prevailing mood. In Chhattisgarh too, I did a fairly long road trip, this time making sure I ventured into the tribal belt again. So what are my key findings? Well, here are my top five takeaways on what's happening in Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh. Number one, all sitting governments are on notice. It is my understanding that the voter has had a very rough five years. The COVID years in particular are still haunting many people, especially those living on the margins. Death and infection, high inflation, job losses, falling incomes. This, my friends, has been a tough period for the Aam Janta. The average voter, therefore, doesn't have a feel-good feeling. In rural Madhya Pradesh or in tribal Chhattisgarh, people I met weren't swayed by the buzz around a G20 or Chandrayaan as we might be in a TV studio, but by something more basic, LPG diesel prices. I didn't sense anger as much as disillusionment with those in power in both in Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh, a feeling of being left out and also a betrayal in Madhya Pradesh at the manner in which an elected government was toppled in 2020. Number two, takeaway. I sense that the voter is disillusioned more with their MLAs 
than with the chief ministers or the prime minister. This is important. I didn't sense any anger against either Shivrat Singh Chauhan in Madhya Pradesh or Bhupesh Baghel in Chhattisgarh. And certainly no anger against Prime Minister Modi who remains a highly popular leader. What I did sense though is a feeling of unease that many MLAs went missing during COVID times. The anti-incumbency of fatigue or disillusionment is therefore more against these missing MLAs and the local political karyakartas or networks than the chief ministers. While there is a feeling that Shivrat Singh Chauhan has had a long, long run in power and maybe there should be parivartan, he isn't a disliked figure. I had seen anger in Madhya Pradesh, my friends, in 2003, especially over the condition of roads and frequent power cuts. And this led to the rout of the then Digvijay Singh government. This time, there isn't anger as much as maybe a sense of fatigue. In Chhattisgarh too, most people still see Bhupesh Baghel favorably despite the corruption charges being made. In particular, the chief minister has cultivated there a strong rooted Chhattisgarhia identity which is liked by most people. Takeaway number three. In both states, the ruling governments are trying to manage this creeping anti-incumbency by putting cash in the hands of core voters. If Shivraj Singh Chauhan and BJP are still in the fight in Madhya Pradesh, it is because of the Ladli Bhena scheme that is giving 1250 rupees per month now to women from poor families. It was just started seven months ago in March ahead of the elections but it has given women something to cheer. Every hundred rupees extra matters in rural households. Any additional income in poor families is always welcomed. Similarly, Mr. Baghel's loan waivers, power tariff cuts, unemployment allowances have given some respite to farmers and youth. In both states, therefore, the election has become a battle for freebies because the opposition also is promising similar allowances for women and loan waivers. Therefore, it is a question whose welfare schemes put more cash in hand will garner more political equity. Takeaway number four. In both states, localized corruption is a cancer. Nothing, it seems, happens without money changing hands at the local level. From shop licenses to school admissions, bribes and cuts have been normalized. The vast local bureaucracy in both these states is seen to be hugely corrupt, as are the local level leaders who often act as the middlemen. Bagair paise ke sar kuch nahi hota is a familiar refrain I heard on the ground. Takeaway number five, and this again is important. The youth are angry, very angry. The anger is primarily because of a lack of jobs, but more importantly, because of a sense that all government jobs which are still prized are being manipulated by a Neta Babu system that is now totally corrupted. Government exams being allegedly rigged, exam papers being leaked, Results being delayed, the frustration among the youth is apparent on the ground. If in Madhya Pradesh you will hear talks of a Patwari scam, how all the toppers came from a college which was owned by a local MP. In Chhattisgarh, it is about the manner in which the public service appointments have allegedly been manipulated. Youth, my friends, want more political options today beyond just the Congress and BJP. But the truth is, in both these states, they have no such options. So how does all this translate into my poll forecast? Remember in Chhattisgarh, the Congress won a big majority in 2018, almost a three-fourths victory. The margin of victory in percentage vote share terms was around 10%. Reversing that, therefore, won't be easy. There is a swing away from the Congress, but I don't think it is enough yet 
for the BJP to reverse the 2018 verdict. Strangely, the BJP seemed to give up on Chhattisgarh all too early. They are clearly now back in the fight, but maybe it is a little too late for the BJP to cover the gap. The BJP has interestingly sponsored some third party and independent candidates who could have a key role to play in some marginal seats. But net net, advantage Congress in Chhattisgarh, but the advantage is much lesser compared to 2018. Madhya Pradesh, my friends, is more difficult to call. Remember that in 2018, both the Congress and BJP had nearly identical vote shares and the Congress was ahead by only a few seats in the 230 member assembly. They got 114 and took the support of smaller parties and independents to form the government. You would think, therefore, that the Congress should be doing better this time because their ticket distribution has been better than the BJP and should improve on their tally. But, and this is a very important but, Shivrat Singh Chauhan's pro-woman pitch through Ladli Bhena has brought him right back into this fight. The BJP still has a superior organization on the ground, even though the BJP this time appears strangely more factionalized than a then compared to a Congress, which for once appears a little more united. But the truth is, the Congress still lacks a leader with a genuine mass connect in Madhya Pradesh. Kamal Nath is 76. He has run an energetic campaign, but he is not a Siddharamaya style mass leader. Both sides therefore seem to be relatively uniformly matched in terms of resources as well. My sense is, it's possibly too close to call this election, but if women vote overwhelmingly for the BJP, then I'm willing to stick my neck out and say, advantage Kamal. But, and there is again a but here, if the disillusionment against the state machinery runs deeper than I think it does, it is advantage Kamal Nath. Kamal or Kamal Nath. I do believe one side will eventually have a more definitive lead than the wafer thin majority of 2018. But I am still not willing to commit myself to saying which. Am I playing a little safe here? Maybe I am. Don't forget how I told you I got bit badly wrong in 1993. So I guess in the case of Madhya Pradesh, it's a case of once bitten, twice shy. As one of my London top Hindi news website reporters put it very well, Madhya Pradesh mein BJP harti nazar aa rahi hai, par Congress jitti bhi nazar nahi aati. BJP looks like it is losing, but the Congress isn't winning either. Think about it. That was the straight bat. Do of course subscribe to my YouTube channel for many more such videos. For now, stay well, stay safe. Jai Hind. Namaskar.